Okay, so web workers are a way for JavaScript to have multiple threads. So let's take the simple counter app where I have a element selector which selects this DOM element. I have a count that starts on zero and I have a simple set interval that runs every half a second that updates the elements in a text to the count and I increment the count. But let's say under some condition, maybe when count hits 10, I want to run a pretty large process. And by a large process, I mean something that's going to block the single thread that JavaScript has. So to set that up, let's say, and a blocking uh, process could be a simple for loop as well. Just, just ensuring that the for loop runs for a significant amount of time. Okay. And let's just say I mark the endpoint as well. And just to see how long this for loop is running for, I can probably set up some performance markers. And let's print out how long it took to execute. I believe it's in milliseconds. So now when I refresh the page, we can see that the counter runs through the numbers as usual. But the moment it hits 9, it gets stuck. And I can see that the processing, which is our for loop here, has started to execute but hasn't ended yet. And the reason why this 9 isn't updating to 10, 11 and so on is because we've essentially blocked the single thread that JavaScript has. And we blocked the thread for 12 whole seconds and it's only after it ended did the counter continue to execute. So a way to kind of circumvent this is to use a web worker. A web worker would allow us to take this heavy processing that we were doing here and move it into a separate thread. So. Uh, to set up a web worker, let's just create a worker.js file. And the way the communication happens between the main thread and the worker thread is through message passing. So let's just add an event listener to the worker saying that whenever I receive a message, if the message, if the message dot data says start, then let me go ahead and execute this, All right? And just to be more explicit, this is running inside the worker and this is ended inside the worker. And this is the execution time of the worker. And here, let's just see, this is where the main thread starts. And all of this goes away now. This is where the main threads work ends. And the way that we would use this worker now in our app to give it a message is by pulling it in using the worker constructor. So let's say we have that. And all we have to do is pass it the worker file. So in this case, it's this worker.js. And once we have the worker instance, we can post messages to this worker. And let's just pass it the string start and yeah let's see how this works so now when i refresh the screen i can see that the counter continues to increment but it hits nine and does not stop and you can see that the main threads work here has ended but the worker has started and is continuing to go through our for loop here but the main thread isn't blocked anymore right and we can see that the worker took about 12 seconds and then the worker ended and we essentially didn't stop this uh, counter from continuing to count through the numbers. So this is how you would pull in a web worker into a regular JavaScript application. But let's say we were using Webpack to bundle all of our JavaScript assets into a single bundle. So I have another project here, which is pretty much identical to what we just wrote. We have a worker uh, that we're pulling in through for the new worker constructor. And the worker itself is what's running our for loop. The only difference here, however, is that we're bundling the entire application using Webpack. So I have a entry file for my app.js. I bundle it and, and have an output in the dist folder. And I run the entire application through a Babel loader for transpilation. 
So now let's see what this gives us. We can see the count is running, but we get an error in the console saying that a resource was not found. And the resource that was not found was our worker.js, which essentially means that this line here, where we're pulling in the worker.js file, never actually worked. And that and that's because Webpack, based on your entry file, tries to create a dependency tree. So it looks through all the files that are being imported through an import statement or a require statement, and then tries to bundle in those files into your single bundle. However, that does not happen with a new worker uh, constructor. Webpack does not see this as a dependency for your bundle and hence doesn't bundle it. So to make this work, we can use another loader in our Webpack configuration. And this loader is called the worker loader. So let's install that first. So once, we've, once we're done installing the worker loader, we can go to a webpack config and add a new rule that says that anytime I test for a file with the extension worker.js, instead of running it through Babel loader, let's run it through the worker loader. Okay, and just to ensure that our worker file is seen, let's rename this worker.js to app.worker.js. Cool. So now that we've set this up, we can now do the following. We can import the worker using an import statement from app.worker. App and now since we've already imported it through an import statement, we don't need to pass the file path here anymore. And we can keep the code as is where we're posting a message to the worker. And now let's see what happens now. Now we don't we no longer have that 404 error saying the resource is not found. The counter crossed 10 and we can see that the heavy processing has started and this processing was, was, was what was in our worker. So that's how you can pull in worker files into your uh, webpack ecosystem using a worker loader.